Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's kind of the uh, late in day two of Discover, maybe day one for some of you guys. Uh, appreciate you sticking it out uh, and joining. Uh, my name is Brian Thompson. I lead product management for the HPE GreenLake private cloud portfolio. Um, this includes a number of our flex solutions, but uh, predominantly focused around private cloud, delivering private cloud solutions. Um, and as you've been lured in by that creative title of the topic du jour, AI, and the promise of AI, and uh, the challenge that kind of comes with this. Everybody's uh, allured to the, the promise and the potential and the different applications and services of AI, yet I think there's the um, uh, reality or, or practice of how do I get started, how do I think about my intellectual property, my secret data, things that are important to my business, and how this really kind of plays into it. But either you've been asked by directly or you're the ones asking the questions. Every organization ever since ChatGPT was launched is asking the questions, what is our AI strategy? What are we doing? How are we going to stay ahead of this? Um, how do we not become a statistic that missed uh, taking advantage of this emerging technology? I think one of the things that we hear from our customers, though, is the complexity of this. How does AI fit into our existing uh, technology strategy? Um, how do I take advantage of this emerging technology or capabilities with limited resources? Financially, skill sets, players on the field, what resources do you have to try to leverage this? And then really, it, and this is really kind of one of the themes that we're really focusing on is, how do I operationalize this? How do I take this and manage from security or compliance or risk around consuming these types of technologies and services? If we think about uh, as kids on the playground, kind of the, the secret game and who can keep the secret, well, the emergence of AI creates these new challenges or risks that we look at, the vast majority of public AI services, those models rely on the inputs or they're continue to be informed by the inputs of users using that service. So every piece of data that gets passed into that helps evolve, mature, train those models and inferences and, and other generative things that kind of come from that. Well, what if those are your corporate secrets? What if your protected or secret data is being used to feed into these models and informing these models. It's no longer your secret. It's now part of that platform. And this is that kind of scary reality. How do we think about uh, leveraging this capability without risking uh, data exposure, sensitive data, your corporate uh, precious resources kind of being exposed? Well, one of the things that uh, we've learned if we think about a recent IDC survey as uh, across a number of organizations, they think about the emerging or top workload that they are actually looking to repatriate or move from public cloud into private or dedicated infrastructure continues to be AI workloads, related AI services. And it's for those same reasons. How do they think about locality of data, uh, security, privacy, their risk? So you think about AI workload placement not all workloads are, should be treated equally. You think about where you can leverage or expose these services and what's the data I'm taking advantage of that, where can I deliver that in a, uh, a predictable, uh, scalable, and controlled fashion and put those kind of controls around that. Now, one of the things HPE, and we've talked about this thematically over the last couple of years, and especially the emergence of the HPE GreenLake platform, we think about the service offerings natively enabled via that platform, much of this includes that hybrid by design experience. Uh, most organizations are hybrid by accident. They're running a, a collection of private and public infrastructure. We've really worked hard to enable that hybrid by design. How do I help and enable and experiences for intentional workload placement. How do I make workload placement decisions based on the performance, security, compliance, cost, any number of those considerations on where best to deploy my optimal workloads? AI is no different than that. How do I think about taking advantage of this? So that hybrid by design, enabling that experience, how do I provide those core tenants, those core primitives that organizations need to deliver or operate AI, inferencing, PFT, fine tuning, different types of components along that AI spectrum, private cloud is a great substrate or landing for that. 
Um, one of the things that we provide out of the box is that uh, GPU enabled, we call them uh, instance types. I think about how I deliver and provide a private cloud experience. I can deliver optimized instance types based on the types of workloads that our customers are looking to run in that environment. It's not a one size fits all. So as you heard in Antonio's keynote announcing uh, AI optimized instance types for our GreenLake Flex solutions, the same solution cascades into our private cloud offerings where I have GPU enabled compute resources that can be deployed as part of your private cloud experience. Again, optimized designed to run those AI workloads. You think about the cloud experience. How am I enabling my users to leverage these technologies and deploy these types of workloads? Our private cloud delivers those same cloud primitives needed to do that in a self-service experience. So common tooling, API, CLI, Terraform workloads. How do I think about the automation orchestration of deploying these workloads across those largely container-based? You think about AI applications. The vast majority are running in containers, but of course, in virtual machines, on bare metal nodes, giving that flexibility of a cloud experience, but again, focused in that private cloud context, thus fitting into that full kind of secure by design. You control the geolocality of your data. I'm not traversing different boundaries as you establish that and where you want it to be. By running it privately, I have that inherent low latent direct connectivity to my core data. The vast majority of these applications workloads I'm using against my corporate data. That's part of the value of the inferencing I can get is running against those precious assets. But now I can do so without it needing to leave the security, that virtual or physical boundary of my data centers, my co-location, my dedicated environments. And that's really that uh, value proper residence that we're seeing with customers as they look to leverage these types of solutions. We think about that full spectrum of a private cloud portfolio. So spanning from things like I mentioned the AI optimized workloads, like as we think about those instance types, so built for performance. It's not a one size fits all, uh, watered down generic compute infrastructure. These are truly built for purpose or optimized workload enabled uh, solutions as part of that kind of private cloud experience. But it's very much focused on where do you need it to be? How do I bring the power of these compute resources to enable and deliver these AI workloads where I need it to be, whether it's in my core data center against my data or running in edge locations, providing real-time inferencing results at the edge uh, based on those types of services. We think about the whole experience of unlocking productivity by embracing open standards and allowing your cloud users in a self-service way using common or well-known tooling, right? Things like, again, Terraform or other uh, de facto standards on how they would think about templating, orchestrating, deploying, and managing these types of workloads and solutions. Um, doing that in a, a private cloud context helps them, again, with that full agility and moving quickly. Within that portfolio, though, we also address that um, operational model. How do you want to consume these services? Everything from a fully managed, deliver this as a cloud, as a service in your data center, all the way through providing you self-service tooling that you can use to manage and operate this cloud on your own. So providing that full spectrum. And then of course, the hybrid nature. As we focus on that, customers aren't binary. They're not all public, they're not all private. How do we help enable that hybrid experience, allowing you visibility, deploying and managing workloads across not just your private cloud or clouds, um, but also then extending into the hyperscaler public cloud environments. Now we think about AI as a broad kind of statement and a buzzword and, and what are the different uh, use cases and scenarios that are starting to be uh, prominent or where we're starting to see this consumption. And AI has that full spectrum. We think about model development all the way through training, fine tuning, PFT, and ultimately either generative or inferencing types of, of scenarios and use cases. And if you think about a broad spectrum of scenarios or uh, services or platforms that you may use along that spectrum, we think about where there's a lot of value that can be done without necessarily needing the entire supercomputer experience. How do I enable some of these AI workloads, especially the inferencing, fine tuning, to run in what might even be smaller form factors at the edge in smaller data center type of constructs? Um, and this is where we're starting to see a number of these uh, use cases emerging. 
Uh, from a retail perspective, if you think about the broader context of how do I optimize um, and provide more um, uh, high-level influencing, decision-making, optimizations along the way, retail's been a great example and early adopter of a number of these different AI scenarios. Uh, grocers, uh, grocery chains, is a great example. I have scale component problems I have to deal with, right? Massive scale, multiple locations. I'm in an incredibly competitive and yet typically low margin business. So my, I have to make informed, efficient, cost-saving decisions wherever I can to drive efficiencies and, and create overall productivity improvements. Think about the AI capabilities that are starting to be leverageable by that. Everything from more intelligent inventory planning and forecasting, how do I provide more um, optimal spend and investment so I'm not over uh, inventory stocking as well as not creating outages and lost revenue opportunities. You think about things even like real-time video analytics occurring at the edge from uh, scanning produce to make sure that I have the appropriate level of freshness and I'm able to uh, ensure a better customer experience all the way through things like self-checkout and automated services, yet with automation and trained models that can help detect things like shrinkage or theft, uh, the old uh, UPC or SKU swap, where I'm scanning what looks like a banana, but it's really an avocado because it has the same SKU on it. One's a higher priced item, one's a lower priced item. Now I'm ordering the wrong inventory, right? These are some of those scenarios, but AI is helping these types of industries drive more efficient use of these resources and reduce their overall cost and waste, and more importantly, re-pivot their precious resources, the actual human resources within the stores, focusing on delivering a better customer experience, a more memorable shopping experience, rather than on mundane, repeatable, uh, low-value uh, tasks that go with that. Healthcare is Another really interesting space, if you look at the opportunity, I have inherently very private and sensitive data. I don't want to outsource or move this outside of very specific regions based on compliance requirements, security, privacy needs that fit that. But there's a number of tasks that are automatable, mundane, mundane tasks, uh, non-value add, that if I can provide AI services to automate those tasks, I can now pivot my resources on focusing on better more timely, more accurate patient care. Uh, simple things like uh, 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 speech to text trans transcription, sorry, I'm trying to think about like doctor's notes, patient notes, visit notes. How do I actually automate that process? How do I then use that to validate things like uh, ordering tests or prescription validation? How do I run that against a prescription formulary rather than somebody trying to interpret handwriting of a doctor? Uh, making sure that that quality of care is there. Things like automated or uh, uh, auto nurse type of experience. How do I pre-screen patients, allow them to self-present their uh, health history, uh, current symptoms? How do I help diagnose or, or accurately identify that and then route them to the appropriate care uh, success plan that kind of follows through that? There's a lot of that automation that could be just time consuming, a terrible customer or patient experience. Now I can apply those resources toward automating that experience getting them to a better result more quickly. I think one of the other key uh, examples is really, we think about uh, things like logistics, supply chain optimization, uh, transportation types of services. Of course, it's easy to think about, okay, route optimization. How do I more optimally route transportation or anticipate weather uh, issues that might force redirection of things? But even if you think about things like an MRO experience, manufacturing, predictive maintenance, um, how do I identify or use based on patterns or usage patterns, predictive failure rates? I can there be prescriptive and do preemptive maintenance, avoiding outages, downtime, uh, very expensive scenarios in that. Um, keep my uh, infrastructure up and running as I need to. Um, things like even inventory analysis, how do I look at misplaced inventory and identify that through video scanning or understanding of my overall warehouse or distribution or logistics as opposed to relying on uh, phantom data that may exist in uh, legacy inventory systems without that visual verification. So a number of different scenarios and use cases where that simple trained model and combining different disparate data sets together allows you to drive new insights in an automated fashion that otherwise might have taken people management or clipboards or trying to solve these things kind of on their own. Now, one of the things, uh, opportunistically, I'd like to welcome up uh, my colleague Mohan Rajagopalan. Uh, 
Mohan leads our Esmeral software business. Thanks, Thanks Brian. Yeah. I, I want to bring Mohan up. Mohan leads our Esmeral software business, and we think about the Esmeral software space, some of the key areas that they're working with customers on uh, unified analytics and other uh, deep ML learning AI types of solutions. I thought it was a great opportunity to ask kind of what you're seeing and, and how you're uh, working with customers. So first of all, thanks for having me here, uh, Brian. Uh, what I must say is, you know, we've been working very closely. Brian's very humble, so we've been very, we've been working very closely, building the software and infrastructure offerings for our customers. Right? Uh, you mentioned unified analytics. Uh, we've basically been doing trials, customer trials for almost uh, two dozen customers now, using your private cloud stack. Right? And I think what gets me really excited about AI at HP is we have the entire solution from silicon all the way through servers, all the way through the software stack. Uh, and again, this is one of those things that we don't talk about enough, I think, as a company of sorts here. Right? Uh, specifically in terms of like, you know, what I'm hearing from customers, what are the big themes and stuff like this, I think there are two or three repeating patterns. One is uh, many customers or many like, large enterprises are excited about AI. Almost everybody wants to dabble into AI, but they still haven't figured out exactly uh, what it means and how to basically uh, build a stack that basically serves their needs. Uh, along with that, AI, and you know we introduced this concept of an AI native architecture today. I think it kind of tried to surface out feedback we've been hearing over the last couple of years where, yes, when you look at the next generation of these data intensive applications, we may have to change the way we think about the, the traditional compute paradigm of sorts itself, right? And I think the final part here is there's a lot of um, trepidation largely because there's a lot of unknowns. You know, in the good old days, you'd write a program, it was very deterministic. In the age of AI, the models are becoming much more generative, which means they tend to hallucinate. There's this element of how do you control the model when you don't have determinism baked into the system. Right? So there's a whole bunch of such like uh, aspects that are coming out in these conversations, which I don't think anybody has good answers to. But I think like we've always done, we're going to like work with customers and figure out this stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned kind of the AI native uh, architecture and some of that kind of uh, key components that come into that. How do you think about some of those things? You mentioned before working with customers that are trying to figure out how to get started and kind of moving along that way. Um, what are uh, maybe some keys to get started, I guess, or where, yep. where would you go on that? I think, yeah, so, so again, coming back to the framework that we use to think about AI native architecture, right? I think it's really a combination of uh, three different dimensions. I think the story always starts with data, right? If you can make data easy, if you can make it easy to pipeline data into these intelligent systems, if you can make it easy to curate data, to collect data, to like basically stage data, it's a huge leap forward, right? And I don't know of a single customer or an enterprise solution that does not start with data. Yeah. Combine data with, like, you know, if you think about what HP brings to the table, it is really the entire stack, right, uh, of infrastructure, of, like, you know, the, the system software. So think about, like, you know, so one of the, one of the big things that I'm discovering, uh, you know, we have a Kubernetes uh, implementation in HPE, right, and that's part of your container as a service solution yeah. as well as uh, our container offering, right? When you think about, AI ML workloads, almost every solution is containerized today. Yeah. Right? When we looked at NVIDIA stack this morning, it's nothing but a bunch of containerized apps. Right? So, so when you think about the stack, it's not just about the hardware or the servers, but it's really about how the various pieces come together and being able to offer our customers a soup to nuts offering all the way from silicon to application level of sorts. And of course, you know, services are a very important component here because all of these things require setup. Right? Uh, and finally, I think the third pillar for AI native is really around uh, being hybrid by design. Because from a data point of view, what we are realizing is almost 70, 80% of customer data, enterprise data is still on-prem, yeah. right? And I think that's where there is, it's, it's a gold mine of opportunity for us to harvest and see if we can basically create richer insights from there. Yeah, it's interesting, you kind of mentioned that uh, data first and starting with data first. And I, and I think this is the, at least the thematic piece that I've seen too is the, the promise of, of AI, and especially in commercial 
uh, applications? Where are we going to drive business benefit? It starts with how am I deriving insights from that data? And where such a percentage of it, data has gravity. Um, how do I bring that AI workload and capability to where my data resides? Um, the security piece is, of course, one thing that everybody looks at, but it's still a speed of light issue at the end of the day. I'm looking to run this uh, intensive workloads and applications and derive it um, based on that data that I'm accessing. So I think that's... You know, uh, you know th there's another element, and I think, I think this is a good forum to bring it out of sorts, right? So I remember when we had customer conversations last year, one of the things that made our stack distinctive was the fact that if you lay out the hardware and software pieces together, you can bring out value-added capabilities, things like zero trust security, et cetera, right? And I think it becomes even more relevant in the AI world because, for example, you don't know where your models were produced. You don't know what kind of data sets they were trained on. As long as you have a controlled ecosystem, I wouldn't call it a closed ecosystem, I think you provide those like degrees of comfort to the customer uh, or the enterprise to ensure that like, you know, there's a more predictable model of sorts. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. One of the things that you mentioned too, and I just to key on this, the idea of a controlled but not a closed ecosystem. I think one of the things, and you've seen this, especially if we think about the evolution of unified analytics and more of these advanced solutions. Um, and we heard this, I think I was with you at our customer advisory board where many of the customers are like, I don't want an overly prescriptive solution because the tool chain I'm using today may not be what my team wants to use tomorrow or six months from now. Um, so I think that's kind of another important part. Absolutely, right, absolutely. So if you go back to two years ago, a lot of AI was being done using Spark as the ETL engine, right? right? If you look at ChatGPT, ChatGPT is not using any Spark technology. It's built on a framework called Ray, and guess what? You know, Ray is a completely different set of technology. So I think customers are now starting to get more sophisticated. They realize as like the use cases change, so will the tools, and they don't want to be locked into any given vendor, right? They want open interfaces, uh, they, they do see curation as a value, where again, they don't want to be left out in the lurch to go and figure out which tools to use. But I think and this is where HP can play a big role uh, in the sense that I think we bring together in some sense a best of breed set of offerings. Uh, yeah, and in some sense, like, like you do with cloud modules and like you know, your pre-configured uh, hardware stack, and the software layer we're trying to bring to our customers the best of breed open source technologies, and in some sense simplify their decision journeys. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a really important point, and I think where we've seen a lot of mutual success with our customers leveraging these technologies, where it's that pluggable scaffolding, I think is an analogy that you've used before, which I think is a great fit of how do we automate and simplify integrating or enabling these technologies without forcing you into a quote unquote locked in path, because these are emerging technologies, they're open source tooling and services that change all the time. Uh, we wanna make sure we're able to provide you those consistent experiences, but more importantly, a framework that allows you to not be bound to or locked into um, and leverage these emerging technologies as they uh, come onto the picture. But uh, coming back to my overall theme, and I will resonate this selfishly, is uh, doing so with the security control you need in a private cloud. How do we enable that experience uh, such that you have uh, full control over users and auditability and all the things that you and care about? That, that. That's a very important element, Brian, because what we are starting to see more and more of is as we go to some of these more sophisticated models, and you brought it up earlier in the conversation, right, where it's, can, can AI keep a secret? I've never heard that before, I'm gonna use it again and again though, because I think that is, that is a billion dollar problem today and there is absolutely no way to um, figure out if the data that's being used for training can be leaked or not. These are the kinds of problems that large enterprise is now grappling with today, and I think this is where I think our private cloud offerings just the way you've thought about it bottoms up and just the way you've thought about, I mean, when I think about private cloud, for me, it's all about giving our customers the choice points around where they want to place data, where they want to place compute with the right guardrails and scaffolding to ensure there's auditability, lineage, et cetera. I think that's a killer differentiator, right? And I think we start seeing a lot more of that as compared to going to hyperscalers and simply blindly training models and stuff. Yeah, could agree more. Right? Mohan, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Always a pleasure, really appreciate it. So you've kind of heard the, the theme to this. I think we all are seeing the promise of AI and the potential. Everybody's looking at how can I automate tasks? How can I provide additional value to my constituents, whether they're external customers, partners, internal users? How do I drive more efficiency 
more intelligence and inference that helps inform decisions and helps me move quicker, right? The promise of all these different things. Um, but it still comes down to one of those key components, depending on the data that you're using, what are the decisions you're trying to drive? What is that model that you want to leverage that? Uh, do you want to do that uh, in a private context where you control the virtual four walls where this occurs? You control the user's access, outputs, inputs, um, control that data from being tainted potentially. Um, how do you help enable that experience? And again, we kind of come back to, and again, as you heard from Antonio and others throughout the day today, hopefully, um, that experience of delivering AI where you need it to be is important thematically. Delivering this, in this case, through a private cloud, giving those same self-service experiences to your end users, helping them in an agile way consume these technologies, but with the security and control that you need to think about that. And we think about that private cloud portfolio and that optimization, those, those key things that we're trying to drive in those user experiences. Of course, that consistent experience, be it edge locations, core data center, even public cloud, and extending that same uh, developer, application owner, and cloud user experience. We think about that workload optimization. As I mentioned before, and this is really key, not all compute instances are Created equal, as we know, uh, the, the focus and demand on GPU and different uh, sets to serve that. Being able to provide these from an optimized surface area, yet in a cloud consumption model, becomes key. How do I deliver these workloads with those same interfaces, but not forcing them to go down to the lowest common denominator? How do I actually provide optimized infrastructure to help run these in the most efficient, results-oriented uh, way that I can? As Mohan illustrated, and I think uh, thematically has become such a key uh, driver for our customers, is those open standards and de facto standard-based solutions. How do we help enable that experience? We're using commonly well-understood open source or de facto standard tooling and services to that. And I think that's key to the overall adoption and leveraging of these capabilities and systems today but also helping you future-proof. You're not locked into, you're able to leverage the next thing that's gonna be around the corner, the next tool chain, the next application stack. You wanna make sure that you are uh, able to embrace those things uh, very quickly. And then at the end of the day, it's still about that low and predictable TCO. What's my cost to run these workloads? How do I do so in the most optimal way, whether it's in private infrastructure or in some cases, public cloud or, or wherever it kind of makes most sense to deliver that experience from. Um, a couple of data points that came out of Constellation Research published a white paper uh, earlier this year, which basically looked at kind of the new cloud, the, the new cloud norm in 2023. I'm forgetting the actual specific title of it, but it was really that, that uh, acknowledgement of everybody's hybrid and that workload placement decision. Where are they getting the best experience and how's that informing where they place these types of workloads? Not specific to AI, but you think about gener generically or thematically. Uh, 22 different CIOs were in-depth interviewed to look at their use of hybrid cloud and adoption of these different technologies. And in particular, focusing on workloads that are persisted in nature, sensitive to performance, sensitive to latency, um, where there are security or compliance needs, things that you could imagine drive different workload placement decisions. And a couple of key data points that kind of came out of that. When operating or deploying these workloads in a private cloud context, right, dedicated infrastructure, cloud enabled for their constituents, they of course see higher performance. I'm running now in dedicated infrastructure to me, but literally across those workloads, 65% higher performance you can imagine how that translates to other things. Do I have to over-provision in other environments versus can I do this more efficiently or effectively here? Um, the overall TCO, again, it's a seven by 24 constantly available application stack. I'm not taking the advantage of the burst stability of scale up, scale down, or reduce that footprint. Of course, I should be able to get a much better or stronger TCO running that in dedicated and optimized infrastructure. And then lastly, and this is probably, I think, the most compelling piece, by delivering a cloud experience privately, truly enabling that agility, infrastructure as code, enabling that DevOps persona, the application developer persona, they actually see a 2x faster cycle in DevOps. How fast can I go through my CICD pipelines? How fast am I turning updates to my application stacks? How fast can I manage and deliver that? And these are key things that drive results 
to your internal teams as well as your customers, constituents, etc. So we've talked a lot about private cloud. I wanted to share a little bit about that view and vision of how we think about delivering not just AI workloads, but optimized workloads in a private cloud context. Uh, if you're interested, key opportunities we have out on the show floor, um, demos of both the private cloud experience that I've been mentioning, as well as the Esmeralda software, Unified Analytics, our uh, data fabric, other solutions, uh, both available out on the show floor between the hybrid cloud and the AI uh, kind of uh, pavilion areas, if you think about those kind of pillars that are defined. And then lastly, I would encourage you to visit our digital transformation advisors and uh, schedule or work through kind of more one-on-one -on -one attention and workshop as you think about these different technologies and portfolio solutions available and how they can help you in your business. So thank you for your time this afternoon. Appreciate it.